Gormegod Can Corlia. It's more an honour to Shasu and Shaw Mar Friovara. Today opens the door to a future, a shared future. I am honoured to stand here as First Minister. We mark a moment of equality and a moment of progress, a new opportunity to work and to grow together. Confident in that wherever we come from, whatever our aspirations are, we can and we must build our future together. I am really delighted to see every MLA back in this chamber today, and I welcome the fact that the DUP have decided to re-enter the democratic institutions and that the outcome of last year's Assembly election is now being respected. And I also look forward to a meeting of the North-South Ministerial Council shortly. The partial and coalition that is being formed here today by the parties must now dedicate itself to delivering an ambitious agenda for change. I wish all incoming ministers well, and I pledge to work with you all and to collaborate with you all. The public are now relying on each of us to act in their best interests, to serve our whole community with good faith. We must make power sure and work because collectively we are all charged with leading and delivering for our people. In common cause, we must work to make life better for workers, for families and communities, to create hope and opportunity. We must be respectful of each other. The days of second-class citizenship are long gone, and today confirms that they will never come back. As an Irish Republican, I pledge cooperation and genuine honest effort with all those colleagues of a British, of a unionist tradition who cherish the Union. This is an assembly for all, Catholic, Protestant and dissenter. Despite our different outlooks and our different views in the future constitutional position, the public rightly demand that we, com- that we work together and that we deliver together, and also that we must build trust and confidence in our ability to collectively do that. And that will require courage, it will require ambition, not just from those of us that are elected, but also from the public. And if we all can invest in this, and the more of us do that, then the better chance it has to succeed. Now, this power sharing coalition will undoubtedly face uh, great, great challenges, and there are many nettles for us to grasp. The rising cost of living has been a heavy burden on many households and businesses, and there are people out there that are living hand to mouth, and they need our help. There are too many patients waiting for treatments and support. Our teachers, our nurses, all our public sector workers are being forced onto the picket lines, and that demands urgent action from us. There is no escaping the impact of Tory austerity. It has badly damaged our public services. They have presided over more than a decade of shame, and they have caused real suffering to the people that we represent. I wish to lead an executive, an executive which has the freedom to make our own policy and spending choices. We cannot continue to be hamstrung to the Tories in London. So together we must unite, and we equally must fight with one voice the corner of everybody that we represent, every citizen in this society, and we must fight for properly funded public services. Now, I know that we have many shared priorities, and those will be reflected today, but we must deliver more. We must deliver more on affordable childcare and support to support workers and families. We must deliver more on social and affordable homes, because everybody has the right to call somewhere their home. We must transform our health and social care system, and we must ensure that children with additional needs have first-class support. Key infrastructure developments such as the A5, the A29 road schemes, Caseman Park and other signature projects will be delivered so that we can enhance connectivity and support communities. Regional balance and the continued investment in Derry and the North West are essential. We must work together to mitigate the climate catastrophe. We must protect Loch Ness and realise its massive potential. With new leadership in the economy department, we will work in partnership with businesses, the trade union movement, education providers and the community and voluntary sector to improve economic performance. A reformed Invest NA will be required to promote regional balance because everybody should share in the benefits of prosperity. We will now begin to seize the considerable opportunities that are created by the Windsor framework to use our dual market access to grow our exports and ex- attract High quality, higher quality FDI and to realise the all-island economy's potential. We must do more to shape the type of society that we live in. Violence against women and girls is an epidemic 
and it is an emergency and it requires urgent action. That means every one of us working collectively to challenge misogyny and sexist attitudes that have led and continue to lead to violence against women. As political leaders, we must. We need women and girls out there in our society to know that we have their backs, that we are looking after them and that we are going to bring in laws to protect them. One of the first actions this incoming executive must take is to introduce the new strategy to tackle violence against women and girls, and I know that we are all committed to doing that. Mr Speaker, our society is becoming increasingly diverse as reflected in the census results, and that is something that is to be respected and also something to be celebrated. Everyone from every section of this society must know that they matter and that we care. Last year, we marked 25 years of peace and the signing of the Good Friday Agreement, and that was a political accommodation that provided a peaceful and a democratic alternative to 30 years of conflict. So we all know, collectively we all know, as a society we know the value of peace. And today we are all heartbroken for the suffering of the Palestinian people. And I call today in this chamber for an immediate ceasefire, for dialogue and for peace. I was a 20-year-old mother at the time of our agreement. And I remember vividly the sense of hope and that real feeling of optimism. And I go right in behind the politics, and I have worked since then to build the peace. There is no question that our society has been fundamentally transformed because of our peace process. I stand here proud, proud and elected First Minister, as someone who represents that Good Friday Agreement generation, and someone who will lead us into the next 25 years. I am also an Ulster woman, a Tyrone woman, a deeply proud Irish and European citizen. And this is an historic day, and it does represent a new dawn. For the very first time, a nationalist takes up the position of First Minister. That such a day would ever come was unimaginable to my parents' and grandparents' generation. But because of the Good Friday Agreement, that old state that they were born into is now gone, and a more democratic and a more equal society exists. And this is now a better place for all of us. This place that we call home, that we all love, the North of Ireland, Northern Ireland, where you can be British, Irish, both or none, is all a changing portrait. But yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. And I think my appointment today reflects the change that's happening. Now, I am a Republican. I will serve everyone equally and be a First Minister for all. To all of you who are British and Unionist, your national identity, your cultures, your traditions are important to me. I will be both inclusive and respectful to you all. None of us are being asked to surrender who we are. Our allegiances are equally legitimate. But let's walk this two-way street together. Let's meet one another halfway. I will be doing so with an open hand and also with heart. Much suffering and trauma persists in our society as a result of the injustices and the tragedies of the past. We must never forget all those who have died or been injured or their families. I am sorry for all the lives lost during the conflict, without exception. As First Minister, I am wholeheartedly committed to continuing the work of reconciliation between all of our people. The past cannot be changed or cannot be undone. But what we can do, what we all can do, is build a better future. I will never ask anyone to move on, but I really do hope that we can all move forward. I want us to walk in harmony and friendship. My eyes are firmly fixed on the future, looking towards that future where we unify people and society. Every generation must write its own chapter and define its own legacy. Scotland's greatest Irishman, James Connolly, proclaimed, what are, what, what are my ambitions for our young people? Our demands, most moderate, we only want the earth. It's my dream that our children and grandchildren will achieve beyond all of our wildest dreams and all of our wildest ambitions. I believe in our young people. They can change our society. Indeed, they can change the world if we only give them the chance. 
So let that be our legacy. Let our legacy be that chance, that freedom for every young person out there, for every child. 1998 opened up a new horizon of hope and optimism. Now in 2024, let's give today's generation everything that they deserve. Gurmila Mayagov. I now call the Deputy First Minister.